Hey everyone, Mark Giovanni here. Sometimes I get the question, what computer should I buy or use for composing? What computer do you use? What are the specs? Should I use one computer or two computers? And we have two options. We can have one computer, right? and then we can have two computers. But inside having one computer, we can have option A and option B. Option A, it's going to be having one computer with the DAW sequencer, digital performer, Cubase, Logic, and in here, loading all our samples and libraries and sounds. And this usually works. But as you start loading more and more and more tracks, or as your template grows, at some point the sequencer is going to start to act a little bit laggy. You're gonna have overload problems. Maybe you're gonna have clicks and pops. And while you can optimize it, and there are some sequencers that are better than others at handling big loads of sample libraries, in general, you're gonna reach a point where you're gonna have problems. And the reason is because most of sequencers have not been designed in their core to be able to host hundreds, two, three, four hundred, or maybe thousands of instrument track of samplers and synths. So the solution is going to be in one computer, having your DAW, and then having a host application or software like Vienna Ensemble Pro that's gonna host the libraries, the sample libraries, and you're gonna connect them and they're gonna communicate a B Pro, it's gonna send the audio back to your DAW internally. This is option one. Option two is having multiple computers and you're gonna have your main computer that's going to have a DAW, you're gonna have an ethernet switch here, and you're gonna have a second computer with BE Pro hosting the samples. You're gonna connect this computer to the switch with an ethernet cable, and you're gonna connect this other computer to the switch with an ethernet cable, and you can have multiple computers. You're gonna connect them all, and you can host all the samples here and here and here if you've got a big template. And this system, and this system is pretty much the same. The only difference is that this is just one computer, this is multiple computers, and the audio here is routed internally, and here the audio runs through Ethernet. But the setup both in BE Pro and the sequencer is gonna be exactly the same here and here. Now, if you're going to go with a one computer system, what you wanna do is you wanna focus on having the most powerful CPU possible first, and then as much RAM as possible. If you are going with a multiple computer system, you wanna have as much CPU, the most powerful CPU possible here, and as much RAM, and as well a powerful CPU, but as much RAM as possible for your server computers. And they don't need to be a server computer, they act as a server, but it can be just a regular desktop computer. Now, if you are going with the one computer system and you really wanna push the boundaries, you wanna make this as powerful as, as possible, three things. First, consider having separate hard drives, like one hard drive for system, one hard drive for libraries, and one hard drive for files, for the project files. If possible, the three of them SSD drives, it's gonna make your system run smoother. Second thing, consider an NBME right system like this Sonet M.2 system, which basically is a PCIe card where you're gonna stick these four M.2 drives in right and you're gonna get insane read speeds that's going to allow you to stream samples directly from disk and not using RAM. Another thing that you can consider is DSP accelerator systems like the Wave SoundGrid system or the UAD DSP accelerators, either the satellites or the PCIe cards. I've got two of those and basically the way this works is they offload your main CPU. So instead of your main CPU processing your plugins, these cards will take care of that. All right, so this system can now get quite expensive with all these additions and that usually you're gonna pair all these upgrades with a very powerful CPU, maybe like a double Xeon CPU. Sometimes the question is, do I need a Mac or a PC? And sometimes like, ah, Mac is too expensive. Just the Mac Pro Tower with mid to low specs is already $10,000. I love Mac and PC. I've used both for composing, love them. I had my frustrations with both systems. This is in my opinion, not a expensive computer. It's expensive, but let me put this in perspective. Is this an expensive computer? Yes and no. What this is, is a very powerful computer 
targeted to professionals. And now, while this can seem expensive, if you look at Vision though, which is the company that does computers for some of the remote control composers, they've got different versions, but a double Xiaomi version is gonna cost you 10, 15, 20, or $25,000. But we are talking about a very powerful computer with these specs that we've described earlier, and maybe 256 gigs of RAM. They obviously have other options. They've got like the i9 version. I've got this version here that I bought three years ago. And these computers cost from three to six thousand dollars. Now, do you need to start at the five to twenty-five thousand dollars budget for just one computer? I don't think so. Unless you know exactly what you're doing and what you need, you can definitely get the same type of power and for sure the same type of results with other options we'll describe in a second. But in the last video that we did, we put together an entire studio, computer included, with also headphones and software and the libraries for under $1,000. Here's the list of components, but you can check out the video in the link. So if you want to start with just one computer on a budget, you can look at an i5 computer. I've always used i7s and i9 extremes, but I tested this computer in the last video that we did, and I was very impressed. Obviously, it's not a super powerful computer but it can handle a lot it comes with 12 gigs of ram half terabyte of ssd and you can upgrade it a little bit more information in the last video now if you wanted to try a multi-system computer there are different ways of doing that on a budget you can buy a used computer as your main taw computer and maybe use an old computer as the server but the typical way of really getting a lot of power and lots of ram on a budget is going to be go online and find an old used apple mac pro tower 2011 2012 get the six core version and get it upgraded to 12 core there are services online that will upgrade the six core to 12 core that's the cheapest way and then and go on eBay and try to find a server computer. There are data centers that are renewing their servers and they are selling servers with Xeon processors and 64, 128, 256 gigs of RAM for very, very cheap. You'll have to spend a little bit of time here and make a little bit of research, but you can get a really powerful system with tons of RAM for very cheap given these specs. Now, these servers usually run very loud, so you may want to have them in a separate room for sure. So that's all from me. Now, my final words would be, do you really need to start here? I don't think so. I personally think it's way more important to learn composition, to sharpen your composing skills, because it doesn't matter how powerful your system is. If you don't know how to use it, if you don't know how to compose, this is not going to make your music sound good. So I included a free one hour class that teaches you how to use a studio like this and also composing techniques how to compose orchestral music in different styles and a little bit of orchestration so if you're interested link in the description but now this is all from me if you like this video consider subscribing and i'll see you in the next one